I'm oh no. You're fine. Okay. I'm Kim and I'm married to an alcoholic addict. Hi Kim. My name's Chris and I am an addict alcoholic. Hi Chris. We're in the, the final stages hopefully of my, my quarantine. <sighs> Because uh, I went out with some friends on Thursday and then had a bunch of symptoms. Tons of symptoms. We're not six feet apart right now. It's true, but... We live together. We've done the best we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I have it, yeah, it's, it was already in the house before. That and you're not symptomatic now and I haven't developed right. any symptoms and the kids haven't, so... Right, right. Still haven't gotten those results back yet. Mayo Clinic, get on that. Chip chop. Chip, chip chop. No 4th of July celebrations or anything, so. No. Um, Which is a bummer. Yeah. But. And I mean, I think my family has gotten used to, like, not having to bring booze to family functions anyway, so I don't think that it would have been an issue, so. Oh, yeah. So, what's. Fourth of July is like a big drinking holiday for most people, but for your sure. family, 90% of them do not consume alcohol. Yeah. So it's never been like a big issue. I think last year we, that was uh, Josh's bachelor party. So you were pretty Yeah. That was intoxicated. A, a rough one. Yeah. And then um, I was drinking that night and it got a little wild and it was uncomfortably wild. Like, you know... People ended up on the paddleboard in the middle of the lake oh, and sure. stuff like that. You just had a surgery. I just had surgery. I wasn't cleared yet. There was just a lot of things where that's like this. It would have been nice to have been there, but it's kind of nice to have like a, well. It's it's one thing to like to choose to miss out on things or to stay home. It's It sucks when you don't ha- at least have the option to do yeah. the thing. Yeah. Um, but... I know a lot of people wonder what it's like being in recovery in these big holidays where there's a lot of alcohol consumption, but we're lucky where both of our families aren't, our holidays and celebrations don't revolve around alcohol. Yeah. Well, and I mean, there's been, there's still been, a, it seems like things just refuse to let up as far as oh, with things COVID. that keep happening, little yeah. COVID, personal life stuff, you know. All of that shit that went down with Max, it was fucking absolutely heartbreaking. Um, it was terrifying, like... You said that person's name. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. But suffice it to say, that person meant a lot to our family. Yeah. And um, so if it seemed like I was, you know, dancing around it, it was because... The last time that we recorded, we found out two hours before um, all of that shit that had happened. So we just didn't know, one, how to react, and it hadn't really gained any traction. So as things progressed, it obviously um, leaned, I mean, there's a very, very, very slim chance that um, what this person says happened didn't happen. And, um, I forget if we talked about this last time, but the, the, the idea that like, um, people, victims having to try to find the humanity in the individual that assaulted them. And because this person quote unquote did one bad thing, but they like everything else about them. And so they think, well, maybe Maybe I misread the situation. Maybe I did something wrong, but it just sucks that that, that thought has to happen on any, I, so when people get like surprised that somebody, you know, comes out years later, it's because for one, you have no idea what that's like. The other is society has kind of made it seem like people are always redeemable. And so that, that that person should, if they hadn't come forward and they hadn't made a police report, then maybe they should try to find some redeeming quality. But that doesn't. In my theory, I'm always going to 100 percent believe a victim. Yeah, I mean, we That's have how to. I am. And I've said it before: like, if there's going to be casualties on one side, because, I mean, in this instance, there's, as far as we know, only one case. But 
in most instances, there's multiple victims. So if we're going to err on either side, believe women and take one person out. And not just women. It can be men. So always yeah, believe sure. the victim. Right. Yep. You're absolutely right. Always believe the victim. Um, but still, statistically speaking, those committing the act are predominantly male. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter who they're assaulting. Um, but it's, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're potentially saving another X amount of, of victims rather than, you know, this, this, uh, individual who's making the accusation, like that's, that's one person. They're not, I mean, it's so rare that one person goes out and makes multiple accusations. That's so unbelievably rare. So we have to, you have to err on the side of the victim. If you're going to accept casualties on either side, it's got to be. Yeah. You got to, you got to side with the victim. So as much as like that, that whole thing fucked me up so bad. And like that, like that feeling of like just wanting to drink and be alone was, I was gonna say, that so, was, so, so, so heavy. So you left work early one day because it was too much for you to be at work dealing with the loss of your. Yep. That guy dying and. This whole Finding thing out about, about my friend, like I just yeah kept crying at work. And so then couldn't fucking deal with it. That then you went to um, Alex's house, and I think that was the first time where I ever like had fear that you were going to relapse. This whole time, that was the one time where I'm like, "Yep, this is it. This is going to be the time he goes and relapses." Yeah, it it honestly it felt like when I found out about Richie dying, because I just felt like. I didn't know what to do other than I couldn't be alone. And I remember like going and, um, and finding a friend and hanging out with them for hours. Um, and just trying to, like, we tried to go skating and like tried to forget about what the fuck just happened. And that that's kind of, I mean, I, I called you initially, but, um, yeah, I, Alex luckily lives super close to, to my work. So I, I, I swooped in there and, Ugh, man, that was, yeah. And so that like, I could, I found myself, I think we talked about that where like people say like they understand if a person drank in a certain scenario, I found myself kind of getting pretty damn close to that with, with finding those things out at the same time. It was just too fucking much. It felt like, but luckily I got good friends and supportive family and my work that was they didn't have to let me go home that was yeah. really nice of them yeah. to do that um yeah so i think though if you would have relapsed and drank it would have made you feel even shittier about everything yeah. overall so i, I know think trying to remember that too that's that's the thing that always plays in the back of my head is um when i drank and i was sad it always compounded the thing and made it worse mm -hmm. so um so I, I knew that it would just make that uh, because when I, when I get in those scenarios, like I always, I would post something too. And I yeah. didn't want to like post something that was going to be like regrettable yep. or anything yep. like that. And, and that's the thing too. You can at least process it with a clear mind, process what's going on with a clear mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple episodes, a few episodes ago, I'm trying to remember what episode it was. I, got really emotional and kind of talked about a family member that I was still struggling with and felt like may have been still using alcohol. Um, because there's just signs there that they were. And I don't know if it's just being with you and your family more often where I feel like I can be more blunt and just ask questions. Oh, Cause sure. it's like me sitting here pondering it. And it was really weighing on me where I was like thinking about it a lot and a lot, a lot. I had trouble sleeping and crying. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just, we were having a conversation. Oh, they texted me asking how you've been doing. So I thought, here's the door opening. So I'm just going to ask. So how you've been doing with your sobriety, how you've been feeling and all that. And so okay. I told how that you, how you've been doing and opened the door for me to be like, but how are you doing? Mm. Have you been sober and all that? And they said yes. Um, and that, you know, it's been, it's hard though. And I said, yep, I'm sure it's hard for Chris too. Um, but like, there's just, you know, it's just hard because 
no, I, after that, I talked to a different family member and they're talking about all these memory problems, all of these things. And it's like, okay, well, is it because they're actively using or is there some long-term effects? So I actually did a lot more digging into like the long-term effects of, you know, hard alcohol use and memory loss, confusion, all these things that I'm like, well, then they have to actively, actively be using right now. It's actually can be long-term effects. Mm. And so when that one family member was like, well, they're forgetting things all the time. They're doing this and that. I'm like, okay, you're probably over exaggerating. Cause you, that person tends to say and sometimes make, you know, things worse. Sure. But then, um, I was spending time with these family members in the past week, uh, about a week ago. And I witnessed it firsthand where it's like very scary seeing it. So, yeah. um, I got them a food processor for <laughs> very late Christmas gift. I wanted to get a good deal on a nice one and it would deliver to their house during COVID. And then, um, I got to the house, I was sitting there and I was there for a while and the family member, um, was like, Hey, did you bring that food processor with you that you were talking to us about? However, this person texts me the day they got it about it. And I'm like, no, it's here. You guys got it in the mail. No, no. You said you were bringing it. And I was like, no, it got mailed here. And the other family members like, you've seen it. It's here. Mm. And then they walked away. I'm sure embarrassed. Yeah. And then not maybe an hour later, they were sitting next to me and they're like, so when that food processor came in the mail, I read the instruction manual and it's going to be really easy to make um, spaghetti sauce and salsas and all that. And I was just like, wow, like this is what that person was talking about, how it's just like doesn't make sense. And my family member looks very the skinniest I've ever seen them and very frail where it's like. Is there else some, maybe there's something else going on medical besides, you know, the long-term use of alcohol, but yeah, confusion. What if they have liver problems now that can cause a confusion, can cause some memory, you know, it's like all these things where it's, but they didn't appear like they've been using over the past few days, you know, like they, yeah. So it's hard. Yeah. So it just. Did you, and I'm sorry, what, what? When you did your research on... Yeah. Well, there's some syndromes, but um, I couldn't find exactly which ones. But yeah, long-term of ex- ex- excessive drinking. And I did a little research today to figure out how long I think this person has been drinking because it all started when a bunch of family members passed away. So I was mm-hmm. looking back at obituaries of when the, these family members passed away um, and friends... Um, And I think the last of my family members passed away in 2013. So it may have been right around then. So about six years of heavy, like 100 proof Mm. alcohol drinking, like to the point of passing out. So diminished gray matter and white matter in your brain, memory loss, loss of attention span, trouble learning, you know, liver problems. I'm not going to go through all the different liver problems, cancers, high blood pressure, stroke, irregular, irregular heartbeat. Um. So, I mean, it's hard now because it's like short-term effects of alcohol are those same things and long-term effects. So it's like, I'm just going to, and I had to remind myself with you, I had to, I have to trust that you're sober when you're telling me you're sober and I I don't ask you if you are. So if this person's telling me that they're sober and they're not using, I'm going to put trust in that because if I don't, I don't want to break it to the, if they relapse, feel like they can't talk to me about it. Sure. Cause we're human yeah. and that person is still dealing with things, trying to develop healthy coping skills. And if I'm, con- if I'm one of the people that are pushing back on them saying that, well, and that person never got like an actual try it, any type of recovery, anything. Nothing. So it's, it's, it's different in that, um, there, there weren't ways to like try to, you know, focus on memory or like, Cause when you know of the symptoms, you kind of start to, you're, you're, I don't know if your brain just says, oh, okay, so we need to spa- pay special attention to this aspect of our lives and, and adjust yeah. these things. But just, yeah, sometimes just being aware of those things makes a difference in. And the fact that, you know, when they had their alcohol withdrawals, they had those really, really bad seizures. I'm like, well, maybe that's had an effect on their, you know, memory and short-term memory and long-term and a little bit of that. But I feel like their long-term is pretty good because they were talking about things that 
my long i mean my memory is garbage mm. um but yeah although seeing them in person did relax me in the fact that i don't think that they're consuming alcohol well i'm glad I, and um I had overheard you talking to them on the phone uh, a little while ago, and I right. remember how they sounded when they were using. Yeah. And that was a very different sound than, than what I was hearing. And yeah. so I kind of, but the other, yeah, the other thing that sucks is you, we're getting older. Yeah. And shit gets scarier for family members as they get older. And, um, and we have yeah. brain tumors in our family, stuff like that. So then I God. automatically go thinking like, what if it's a brain tumor? What if it, I mean, and the fact, like I know a lot about cancer, one of the side effects of cancer is unexplained weight loss. And I've n- never seen this person as skinny as I have. So then I go back to that, like, what if they have cancer now? And they're, now it's affecting their, you know, brain, you know, That's so I, try, I know, Ugh. I know. And that person's older and obviously things have happened with them. And it's like, I just, then I come home and I can like relax and be like, Chris got help and where where we're at with Chris. And I can at least feel hope in that and try and help this person with whatever comes next. Like, well, and the thing that I had talked about before, and I, I haven't, I haven't followed up on this either, but, um, the notion that for that individual, um, isolation is a big thing. And so having the family feeling like the family comes together in a supportive role mm-hmm. changes that person's tone in such a big way. Um, oh, they were so happy and you were yeah, there. So, I mean, yeah. I think that I think and I mean, that those are conversations that I can have with with uh, family members too to to say, like, you know, let's just make sure that they're OK. And it, it, that's just shit that we do. We, you know, we check in on. I text friends and, and check in on them just to make sure they're doing good. And, yeah. um, I had a buddy call me and talk to me on the phone for an hour today. And, and there's some family members I don't talk to on the phone for that long. So it's just shit that we've got to start paying attention to. Yeah. I think too, with be the self isolation and all that with everything with COVID too. It's like, and I talked to my brother's girlfriend about this is like during all this, you realize how important family is for sure. Like, especially like I'm very close to your family and I've always been very close to them and it's just trying to reconnect back with my family. It's, and it, it was always a good excuse to be like, well, they live like five minutes away. Well, not anymore. Like I have to drive just as far to go to your parents' house as it would be to go to my parents' house. So what's my excuse now? I don't have one. And the kids were very excited to, to go drive see to that family members. house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, to gra- drive to that family member's house. Just in general, spending time with any family. It's yeah. like, you yeah, know, yeah, I don't absolutely. have an excuse. Like, at the end of the day, you know, when stuff was going down, those were the people, I mean, we have close friends that are obviously family, but th- those For are sure. the people that we call on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're lucky that, like, um, our close friends used to live forever away, but now they all live really close, Yeah. Um, which is super nice but it's also like it it makes it easier to go and hang out with them instead of people that we maybe should be uh devoting some more time to yeah yeah so i'm just gonna be more mindful of that yeah and that and that kind of stuff um because i had a good time i make you know i'm like oh i have to drive and this and that but it's like then i was sitting there and i was like i didn't even almost didn't want to leave but i knew i had to kind of a thing like eventually yeah. you gotta go well so let's say that that person was using right um, the more comfortable they feel with you, then the more apt they are to say, Hey, I think I might need help. Yeah. If they don't feel like you're there in a judging, um, factor, then they're not gonna typically, if they know that you're there just purely to make sure that they're doing okay, then yeah. they're, they're more apt to, yeah. to open up, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Especially that. It, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's so stereotypical, but like the older the people get, the more isolated they become in general. Like, um, kids move away, family members move away, or that person moved away from their family members. Like it's just so many factors. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, more nine to five type of people, you know, like all of us have jobs. Um, so you're looking at the work week is already taken out of the equation. Yeah. 
Um, so that's, you know, 50 hours or 60 hours or whatever that, uh, that they're not able to see you. And then it's harder to get yourself motivated to go and see those people. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I, I tried to do some more research on, um, cause I had said some numbers before when it came to, um, relapse, uh, and, and recovery and things like that. And the, the number I had was a, a little mixed. Uh, I think I had said that the success rate of persons who go into treatment was 23% and that was a little meh. So it's actually between, um, so it's between the last study that I saw was between 40 to 60% of, uh, users go, uh, relapse. Wow. So it's still it's huge. fucking huge. That's that a really huge. big number. Um, but it's not exactly as, as it, again, still fucking huge, but it is not as bad as I had said before. So I wanted to, to throw that out there. Um, and I, I, you know, I forget if I ever talk about the dreams where I use on here or not. I know I talk about them on our other podcast, um, which by the way, if you're a listener, if you ever hear that like kind of bassy intro versus the acoustic guitar that you hear at the top of our show, that is dude, absolutely. And if you don't want to hear a bunch of cursing and a bunch of dude talk, then feel free to just skip that episode. And this show, Not So Anonymous, is every Wednesday. Yeah. So just to clear that up for people. Um, I mean, it's terrifying to think that like, there's so many things that may never open up again because of COVID. Mm. Uh, like LA tried to open up and they had to shut right back down. Um, so it's, it's crazy to think like what will normal look like mm -hmm. and will it go on for so long that I just like restaurants and bars and things like that. I'll never end up going into anyways. Or oh, far less frequently yeah. so that yeah, that I won't have to even think of that stuff. And really the restaurants that we've been going to are drive throughs and they don't serve alcohol. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, the, and I was telling you this yesterday, like how the house is like a fortress now, like not in like the sense that nobody can get in here, but the way. But that, we don't want you in here. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. But we want I, people uh, here. It's fine. I just feel um, like this is my my place to be. I like being here a yeah. lot, and I don't I don't know. It, as weird as that might seem, I I love people, but I just I I really yeah. like being here. You've gotten comfortable here, and so See, it's I, I wonder, interesting like, that like I I look forward to you coming home now. But before, when you were drinking as heavily as you were, I hated when you came home. Sure, because you're thinking how soon before. When you were going to start drinking. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then, okay, when you would walk in the door and open your can right away, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, he's not going to do anything with us for the rest of the night. So this is just on me to make sure everything's done and get the kids ready for bed. And Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe I was going to say, I wonder like, you know, if like five years from now, once things are quote unquote normal. Um, well, what normal will be then? Yeah. 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 What yeah, normal yeah. will be. And then like, if, if I'll even remember what having that desire feels like, cause oh. there, I've, I've met people who have said like, they don't even remember really like what that desire feels like anymore, which is a scary thing to say for some people, like, especially early in recovery, that's not, shouldn't be thinking that way. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting, like goal to achieve to mm -hmm. be like you could almost say it's like a different plane of enlightenment as far as um as far as that goes one thing that <laughs> sounds so silly is we were hanging out with some people well i was hanging out with some people and they were talking about like their significant others went golfing and they're like oh i mm. bet they're getting drunk and now i'm gonna have to drive home and i'm gonna have to do this and i'm gonna have to do that and in my mind i'm like i don't have to worry about that anymore like it's so nice like but I was like, well, 
I'll always have to drive home at night because Chris has bad eyes. But it's not it's not like, a, oh, you decided to get hammered. So now I have yeah, to yeah. drive like it's a it's if, a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, if, if something happened and you couldn't drive home that yeah. night, then, then yeah, yeah, you would, would figure it out. Yeah. Sure. But it's like it's nice not getting angry before you got back from something being like, well, yep, of course he left and I'm doing all this and he's all getting hammered and I'm going to have to take care of everything like the anger that I heard in these people's voices, I'm like, oh, like, I don't, that anger I'm not going to feel again. Sure. And it wasn't, it sounds so shitty. It wasn't like an, it's more like a kind of a resentment. Yeah. Uh, anger, either one is fine. There's yeah. an irritation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that comes with, um, yeah. Resentment, like it's different. Like when fine. you're like, I'm going to go have dinner with my friends and I'm going to go doing this. And it's like, yeah. Because I know you're going to come home and when you come home, you're going to be present and say hi to us and interact with us. Although, you know, sometimes you come to your dungeon here, which is fine, but at least you're like, I feel like you're not closed off anymore. Like that door yeah. to your office used to be like a don't enter. Sure. But now it's like I, w- we pop in all the time and interact with you and you, but I feel like before you always seemed very annoyed that we were taking you away oh. from whatever you were doing. And now like, although you're still creating stuff constantly you don't seem annoyed you're like oh hey okay yeah that's fine yeah yeah that's so i don't know if like in your intoxicated mind you get so hyper focused that you if you get taken away from it you can't get back into that focus that you were in but now that you're sober your mind can automatically get back into that focus of what you were doing yeah, i don't know i mean it's it's hard to remember like exact feelings i think kind of the One of the things was that um, in editing the podcast, like there was cursing and things like that. And I think there was just excuses that I made for why nobody should be in here. Oh, yeah. But yeah, there, but now, yeah, knowing now what I, it was totally untrue. There was, there was definitely no reason that you guys shouldn't have been been in here yeah and that and uh, i've tried to be mindful of that to make sure that you guys i ask for you guys to come in here now <laughs> annoyingly enough you want come on <laughs> in guys come on come on let's come into my office i want to yeah. show you something yeah which is good i'm not saying it's annoying yeah well i mean i like yeah i don't know man it's i want to be productive like i know that sometimes we go into kind of repetitious stuff but part of recovery is like structure Mm -hmm. and so the repetition has a role to play um so yeah i think that stuff's important and i I don't know maybe that we don't record as long as episodes sometimes they don't have to be every episode doesn't have to be an hour long yeah i mean um but i have been forgetting to say if uh if you guys support or want want a way to support um addicts in recovery there's all kinds of ways that you can do that you can go to uh smart recovery you can go to alcoholics anonymous alanon um any of those organizations for sure uh otherwise clean cause i keep forgetting to bring them up yeah uh you can go to cleancause.com and 50% of their profits goes to um, scholarships for individuals in recovery. Um, and they try to assist people in recovery to some capacity, whether that's through treatment or other means, um, which is really cool. I thought it that was just really towards cool. treatment, but yeah. apparently it's, it's for I wonder if it helps too. with like housing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe it's for are, sober yeah. houses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I mean, T-N-S-A-A, the not-so-anonymous alcoholic. Uh, you can use that promo code and, and you'll get 20% off uh, of your purchase there. And obviously it's delicious. They sent us a bunch more stuff or more of the, the product, yeah. I should say. And I love it. And We're it's gonna awesome. have to order more. We're going to keep ordering more. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't leave you feeling weird like with some other energy drinks. Uh, I know. I've noticed that too where I don't drink as much caffeine as I have been. And when I've been drinking like a monster, I feel like I'm having a panic attack. Yeah. But I don't feel it with those. But yeah, like I had a try. I'm like, oh, look at a birthday cake. Bang. That's going to taste delicious. And then just take a couple sips of it and I'll put it in the fridge. And I came in here. I'm like, my anxiety is really bad. I don't know what's going on. My anxiety is really bad. And then I was like, oh, 
I I had a little too much caffeine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What else is coming up? What else is coming up? I mean, mm. I've I've posted before. Um, if you guys are interested in do, us doing a, a live show, oh yeah, um, and we would, I we would rent out a space um, and and make it so that people can come up to a mic. We'll set up a mic stand and have so people can come and ask questions. Um, obviously, there's safe ways of doing that. Um, we'll have hand sanitizer available. Hand sanitizer masks. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, if you, same, same logic that applies to if you're feeling brave enough to go to a restaurant, um, then we'll make sure that we do the safe procedures yeah. to make sure that you can. You What's know, interesting is I am not yet. I don't know. I just feel so anxious about going so to a, a restaurant. Lot of people that are not, I mean, and it's not, I'm not worried that I'm going to get COVID. I'm just anxious about going in there. Cause I don't want, <laughs> this is so weird. I feel bad for the servers. Like I don't. I want to make sure that they're not overstressed about what they're doing. So I feel like I'm going yeah. to be overly like, I don't know, you tip know, your servers. Yeah. Oh, my buddy who is a server, uh, Matt Doima at the, uh, awful service podcast. He's a comedian as well. Um, he's said that people have been absolutely horrible since they opened up, which is a real bummer on, it is. on, 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 Unfortunately, the other end of the spectrum where like he's doing all of these safe things, having gloves and masks and people are giving. And I'm him sure it takes time. them takes servers longer to do what they need to do to make sure that everything's coming yeah. to you as clean as possible. And then for people to be jerks like you guys, yeah. it's a bummer. It is a bummer. Like, so, just yeah. be kind to each other. We live in such a rough world. I mean, we always have. It's just we know more of it. Just be kind. Be kind. Well, Tip yeah, your servers. Push to the to the edge, man. They have, yeah. And wear masks. Yeah, we're not gonna get on that just because people get a little yeah, my fine. rights. It's fine. My body, my rights. Uh, well, and that's whatever. Like, yeah. if 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 not for you, then it, if it just makes somebody else feel more comfortable about it, yeah, then, you know, yeah, go for it that way. Because then you you don't have to be on the defense too because some people go into situations and they're like oh i know somebody's gonna say something about this so i'm i'm gonna react this way no see i'm neutral if i see people without masks i don't care if i see people with them i don't care for sure yeah i'm just just, i and i'm gonna be honest i haven't been the greatest about wearing a mask and now i'm just after (laughs) obviously you potentially having it it's like i'm very more conscious well yeah and i um I started because I go to Target every day for um, for my my salads, and uh, I started wearing a mask when I go in now. Um, it's really not that I know big of a burden. Layla, when we last Plus, time, think about it this way. Here, I bet this will make people feel better. You know how when you make eye contact with somebody mm-hmm. and you feel like you have to do that weird smirk. I know. I don't, don't have to have do to any do of that anymore. You don't have to do Me it. and Layla like to do that. Do you think I'm smiling under this mask or frowning? We do that to each other. But I did realize with wearing a mask, my one ear is lower than the other ear because my mask gets a little crooked. So uh, I'm, I bet that my forehead looks much larger when I'm wearing a mask. Yeah. I'm not positive, but we'll test that be. theory out. Um, and maybe when people wear masks, they'll, if they have a drinking problem, they'll drink less because you have to take it off to drink. Yeah. I didn't notice that my Starbucks drink drink lasted my whole shopping experience because having to slide it down, take a sip, put it up. I'm like, mm. am I contaminating myself? Probably. So maybe I don't really need to drink my Starbucks until I get in the car and I can take my mask off and not have to keep touching it. Interesting. So uh, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, if, if, if people would be interested in that, uh, feel free to, to comment on our Facebook page, Duck Duck Gray Duke, um, or you can email us same, same name at gmail.com, Duck Duck Gray Duke at gmail.com. Um, and that's Duke like the college, not duck. Yeah. Get a lot of people saying we have, they've been um, listening to Duck Duck Gray Duck and I'm like, what's that podcast about? <laughs> we have, um, clothes. You designed some articles of clothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh gosh, yeah. Here, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see some photos, 
scrolling across with the designs um we've got put the bottle down which turned out amazing in person your dad bought one looks so cool that's right yeah i totally forgot about that nice good call kim duke um wait say that again good call kim duke okay um so put the bottle down and we've got the sober mixtape uh boom box oh yeah yeah i'm gonna have to get one of those ones and then um we got obviously stuff for dude absolute but we're not gonna talk that on here you can talk that on your other podcast ripping dingers if you like baseball no how you sleeping if you like sleep i'm gonna have to get one of the crew neck those are my favorite there's hoodies there's shirts tanks tanks Um, not for the okay um but yeah yeah there's so, so there's some stuff podcast, there go wanna... to our facebook um otherwise you can go to teespring.com that's t like the shirt so t-e-e spring as in the fall dot com and then you can punch in duck duck gray duke and uh you'll see our listing and it'll that's show so a bunch cool. of different stuff yeah it, it, i yeah we've gotten a couple of sample shirts and they're freaking awesome so super nice very it's nice very quality exciting. shirts i'm very excited yeah i'm gonna get one of the the mixtape ones for sure one thing too i thought about is that um your brother um they always have a pool party every year and this year they canceled it because of covid but said family can come down and have their own and i got a that's another part where i got a little anxious because when we would go there we would always sneak drink when our fam the family was all together and yeah. we would always well, but over the the last year, I I, I wasn't sneaking anymore. I yeah, was, I was very Old out in the open. open. Yeah, and that pool party was always a marathon of who could of dr- drinking. Yeah, nonstop. I passed out last year in the middle of the day. Don't remember half the things that happened. Got up somehow, yeah. made myself puke. Some it was just awful. Yeah, that's crazy to think. Yeah, um, yeah, I keep getting surprised with how I am able to enjoy things in a sober capacity. Yeah. I like it. Like when we hung out, I don't know. And I feel bad because I listen to our podcast and I forget if I talk about things. But when we hung out with our friends and did that game night and the next morning I was doing. Oh, yeah. Did I talk about this? The next morning I had to do the garage sale and I got up at 730. And usually when we'd all hang out, I get so hammered and feel like garbage for the next whole day. Yeah. And I got up early and I was able to do the garage sale for half the day. Felt great. And I didn't feel like crap. And I'm like, wow, this is like it feels really nice. Yeah. And I started like going back and thinking of things that have happened when I've been under the influence, like awful, awful things that I've done, like very awful things and not know now knowing like that's not going to happen anymore. Like these dumb, awful things that I've done, they're not going to happen anymore. Yeah. And I can not have that anxiety on me anymore. And then I feel like when we get older, I think people too, like the older we get, the next day, along with hangovers, you get that anxiety feeling, mm. that ink constantly anxious, like, okay, oh, yeah. okay, well, you know, okay, am I going to get things done? Am I going to feel like, you know, and I don't, I love, I love just being a normal anxious person about uh, <laughs> drinking too much caffeine. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's so. good. All right. Well, we packed in a lot at the end there. Oh, um, wait, we got nothing else? And that's okay. We don't have to fill an hour every time. But I feel like I got more. Do you have more? I don't know. I have noticed, though, our relationship all together, family-wise, me, you, and the kids. Have you noticed a change in the kids in the last few months? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like, positively. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would agree. Like, for a while there, Layla would be at, like this. Is that okay if I drink that? Because of concerns oh. that... You know, how many times have they been worried about drinking that? Yeah. And now they don't ask anymore. Like, they just know that. And I've told Layla, you know, mommy, we don't, we, there's no beer anymore. So what I'm drinking, unless it's a diet, unless it's a diet soda with caffeine, you can drink it too. Yeah. So I think there's just less, everyone's just less stressed in the house, which feels really good. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, email questions. If you guys just need someone to talk to, oh, you can always message any of us, both of us, our Facebook page, um, email questions. If you want to be on the podcast, yes. how about even if you don't, if you 
don't even have a family member or anything and you just want to be on and talk about addiction, things that maybe you have questions you want to ask someone who's sure. been addicted that you've always wondered, call in. We yeah. have we have the capacity to do call-ins. You can come in in person when Chris gets cleared of his COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll keep it clean. We'll sanitize. You know, if you're uncomfortable, do it on the phone. We can muffle your voice. Um, if there, if you have suggestions on what we can do to make the podcast better, things that you would like to hear more of, mm, for sure, please let us know. Um, if you want to hear more of me and less of Chris, let me know. I would absolutely love to tune them out a little bit more. <laughs> I think that's all I've got. Well, I love you. I love you. And one we, day at a time. <laughs> one day at a time. And with that, we will pass. <laughs>